Stacy here with Bluebird Paper and Thread. Thank you for joining me today. Today is Thursday, August 22nd, and I am not at work because it's my birthday and I took the day off. Actually, I took two days uh, right before I go on vacation for a week. <clears throat> so um, I thought I would hop on and um, go over my whip storage because one of you um, had asked, or a couple of you actually, I think, have asked, how do I store my whips? Um, so we'll, that's what today's video is about. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My channel is on my hobbies, with cross stitching, a little bit of sewing, one day maybe some quilting. I do enjoy paper crafting, card making, gift tags, gift card holders, treat boxes. That's my jam. Uh, this week at work was okay. It wasn't fantastic, um, but it, it's it'll be fine. It'll be all right. Everything will work out. <laughs> Always does, right? Um, Animals are doing great. The two cats, except for today, uh, the two cats um, are, seem to be getting along just fine. We, um, if you watched a previous video, we um, we had to put down my 17-year-old kitty, Macy. Um, so that was a bummer. Um, the whole energy level and the dynamic between the animals has now shifted. Um, and so the two cats, um, my daughter's cat, Chanel, and my cat, Chloe, well, I th technically they're both her cats. Uh, they've been getting along, except for today. I thought when I went to bed last night, I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna have a nice, quiet, relaxing morning. I went and got a pedicure. It'll be great. No, no. 5.30, one of the dogs started barking, so out they went. And then I set my alarm. I, I wanted to sleep in a little bit later till 6.15. So I set my alarm, and at 6, Gunner's outside, and he's carrying on. And I'm like, crap, the neighbors are going to go bonkers. So I went out and the two cats are in the corner of the living room kind of at each other. So shooed them away, went in back to my bedroom, um, was in the restroom and I hear him going on and on and on again. I'm like, I come out, cats are in the exact same place, ready to go at each other again. So I picked up my daughter's cat, Chanel, and I put her in her room and I just said, they need to be separated. This is not going to happen today. So, um, so once I separated the cats, then Chloe kind of laid on the arm of the chair where I was stitching until I got out of the shower and then she moved into the closet. She likes to lay on my husband's clothes on the shelf in the closet. Um, so she moved there and I just, I kept the puppy and, um, Chanel, in my daughter's room. My dog was outside until I left, and then I brought him in and crated him, uh, and I thought we were all good to go, and I came home and I let the puppy out to go to the bathroom and play outside for a little bit, and I that meant the cat came out from underneath the bed, and the cat came out of the closet, and the next thing I know, they're at it again. I'm like, were it four hours and a timeout not enough? Maybe not. So it was not um, a super relaxing, a peaceful, perfect morning on my birthday today. <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, tomorrow uh, we start getting ready for vacation and I take the dog to the uh, border um, to be boarded. So um, that will help a tiny little bit with the energy level, um, at least for the late afternoon and evening. Um, stitching, I'm getting quite a bit of stitching done um, so far this week, so I'm pretty excited. I did start my uh, birthday start. I wanted to start Indigo Lane by Brenda Gervais, and I did. Um, I'm starting with the grass and I've got a little more than half of the grass done already. So I'm excited about that. If I get to move up from the grass by the, by the time I go to bed tonight, it'll be a, a good day of stitching. So um, I'm excited to have a start on that. I do think that birthday stitch is going to stitch up really quickly. 
and um, while I'm thinking about it, I did forget something um, that I wanted to show you regarding organizing my whips. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, um, so let's just jump right in and talk about my um, whip storage. For those of you that are brand new to the cross-stitching world, um, whips means work or works in progress. Um, you can be a monogamous stitcher where you stitch on one thing from beginning to end, or you can um, stitch on a bunch of stuff whenever you want for however long you want. And um, it takes a little longer sometimes to get things finished, um, but that way you get to enjoy more of the things um, than just stitching on one, on one piece. I tend to, um, I, I tend to start a lot of things and it takes me a really long time to finish it. Um, so let me, let me first start out by talking about my, um, pattern storage. So when a chart comes in, I do my very best to put it in my, um, cross stitch plus app. Uh, that way, like this is my Brenda Gervais. Okay. That way, if I'm at a needle workshop or I'm ordering something, I, all I have to do is I've got this app linked to my iPad as well. I just have to look up, do I have it? And if I do, I don't purchase it again and if I don't I can go ahead and purchase it so um, I, I really do enjoy this app the most um, well, I mean it's the only one I've really ever used so um, that's fun and the, the thing about the app for storing your stash and your collection is it's only as good as the person that enters the things I was very good until I wasn't, and I knew that going into it. I knew that there'd probably be a time where I wouldn't be uh, as good in entering my whips into this app. The other thing about this, or my charts into this app, the other thing about this this um, chart is you, or the app rather, is you can track when you've started something, when you finish something, so like autumn days, I started that in September of 2023. It's finished, I just didn't mark it off here as finished, but I marked it in something else as being finished. I'll show you in a little bit. And then I've chosen to keep the chart in here so that I don't forget what I've stitched, because I do that. And then, you know, three years down the line, oh my gosh, this is so cute, and buy the chart again. I just keep it in there and then I put it, I mark it as finished so that I know, oh, I've already stitched that, it's finished. If I take one of my charts and I use it as a giveaway, um, I make a little note in there um, that I used it as a giveaway, you know, so that I don't go looking for that chart, where is it, where is it, where is it? Especially if I, I stitch something that is a gift, um, then I might, I might want to stitch it again and so I might go back into my rotation and I might not be able to find it right away and then I could repurchase it and I'm all for not duplicating purchases because that is not helping your crafty money go very far um, when I have entered that into the chart into the app then I at some point I sit and I put them all in binders. So this is L to Z. I have one A to L. I have one for Brenda Gervais. I have one for Teresa Kogan. And what I've done is I put them in sleeves and I do it alphabetically. I did have these organized by holiday and I decided no, because I might not remember the name of the chart, but I might know that it's a Blackbird design or I might know that it's a Brenda Gervais or I might, I might just think, I, I start going through and flipping through 
the pieces and what's nice about flipping through your binder is that it reminds you oh yes I have that to oh yes I have that to stitch oh yes I have that to stitch so it kind of helps um, jog your memory of what you have so that you can so, see look I forgot all about that one of what you have um, Again, all of these, sorry, all of these systems are only as good as, as you work them. Does that make sense? So if you're not going to sit and input the charts, the system's not going to be very good for you. If you're not going to alphabetize and sleeve and put your charts in a binder, the system's not going to be good for you. Um, when I'm done stitching, if it's a chart that I want to pass on, I put it in my giveaway box. Um, or if someone says, hey, I really like that, I might be like, hey, let me send that to you. Um, if I want to keep it, and I, I keep things for a couple of reasons right now. I keep it because they're fairly small stitches that can stitch up quickly that I can make perhaps for a craft show or to give as a gift. My daughter has expressed an interest in certain things that I stitch. Well, like I gave her one of my um, jelly bean pillows from the Brenda Gervais Easter booklet. Well, now I need to restitch it for me. So I kept that chart. So when I'm done and I want to keep the chart, for now, I bought this file box. It's from Home Depot, but I bought it through Amazon. Up here I have... Um, the tabs and labels that I can use to for the files and then in here I have file folders and I typed I on oh, typed I used my label maker and I made labels for charts now here you will see a miscellaneous Christmas. If I have a one-off chart from a designer and it's not a designer I have multiple charts for, they might go into a miscellaneous folder. Um, if it's one that I have several or if it's a favorite designer, they're gonna have their own separate um, file folder. That way, when I'm ready, I can pull it out and look through if, I, if I'm looking for something and say, oh yeah, I." I want to restitch that for so and so or because of whatever. I now have two five drawer full size filing cabinets in my garage that's going to be dedicated specifically to stitching. I will probably start storing my punch needle and primitive magazines in there just because I'm running out of space in my little space here and I don't this room, which when I get my craft room tour video going, you'll, you'll understand. But this room here is um, very limited in space. I feel like I've done a decent enough job of having zones. Um, there are a few things that have creeped into other zones. So like some paper craft stuff has creeped into sewing and some stitching has creeped into paper craft. There's a tiny little bit of that, um, but um, now that I have those filing cabinets, some of my overflow for stitching could potentially go into those filing cabinets for the time being. It's not a permanent solution, but to make more room in here for things that are current, that I'm working with currently, I think it would be a good, a good thing. Um, so I invested um, at Christmas time last year in a happy planner and I chose I did got this through Joann's create something beautiful every day and I I did get the calendar which I don't I don't use I'm a little irritated with myself for not using it because I you know I kind of started decorating pages I mean like look at here put that sticker down here and I'm not really utilizing it very well. It's okay. 
um, where I keep certain um, like notes if I'm working on something. So I bought this pack. Um, again, I'm not using it very much. I bought this for a specific reason. I will be starting a, um, some kind of needlework business in the not too distant future and I wanted a place where I could just dump all of my ideas, notes, information, all of it in one spot and then use the calendar to keep track of things regarding that business. So it hasn't happened quite yet so that's why some of this isn't working. And then um, Floss 2 Video Planner. <clears throat> the Floss 2 Video Planner and this other whip tracker that I'm going to show you came from an Etsy store, and I don't recall her name off the top of my head, so I will link her below. But it helps me keep my thoughts organized for Floss 2 Video. Um, and then she also has a social media tracker which I'm horrible at using um, but here's what I do really enjoy I enjoy the whip tracker so yes I have it on my phone but I think that what this does for me is this really quantifies it for me at one glance so what I did on New Year's Eve is I sat down with all of my whips and I entered them I did a separate page based on how I wanted to organize so Valentine's Day I had three whips started when I wrote this um, in in January December or January and I started it and I and then I have one finish so I still have two Valentine's Day whips that are in one of these bags that are unfinished so I did that for holidays. So like Easter, I just have one. If it was something that, like I have um, Harrietta by Brenda Gervais, Harrietta and Company. So it's a bunny, but it's not necessarily Easter. So I put that one in spring, but you can see 4th of July. And then what I did is I, um, if it comes in a series, I write the series down. Uh, if it's a number in a series, I write the number down where it's located. So is it in my seasonal whip bag? Is it in my random bag? Is it in my, like where, where can I go to try to find it? And then the start date, if I remembered, and the finish date. So I've done this for all of them, um, all the holidays, all the seasons, um, I know a lot of people like, for example, like to stitch, um, tomato stitches. So you might have a page for tomato stitches and you write them all down as you're going, right? Um, I have one for miscellaneous and you can see this one's in the non-seasonal whip bag. And then I have, um, samplers non-seasonal and I have samplers do I have samplers I don't um, I think the non-seasonal is if if they are a seasonal sampler they would be in if it's a Christmas sampler it would be under the Christmas list then what I did is I had um, several clubs that I did last year through this year and so I made a chart for them so I have a, 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 it's freeze and season um, by Annie B's folk art uh, I wrote when I got the chart in the mail I wrote it down here it's one of 12, two of 12, so on and so forth. And then as I start them and finish them, I will fill out this page here. So I've got, it's freezing season. What I haven't been good at is, um, I don't, 
Well, it says I have all of Beach Boardwalk, but I'm missing one. I. It says I have all of Beach Boardwalk, but I think I'm missing the snack shop. It's some, somewhere. I have to find it. Um, the monthly weigh-in. And then it, I, what I did is um, the 2023 New Year's Eve 12 by 12. So all of the things that I, I pulled aside to stitch, I entered. And if I stitched them, I did a check mark on the, on, in the margin. And if I didn't get to it, I crossed it out. So I didn't start anything new this past New Year's Eve. I just wanted to move some whips along. Now, when they're done, they go into a drawer to wait to be fully finished. Um, I know, a drawer, the, the dreaded drawer where things may go to die, but no, I really do. <laughs> I really do have intentions on finishing every single piece that's in that drawer. So I thought this year it would be fun to track the things that I have fully finished because I found at the end of last year, I felt like I didn't really finish a lot because I have a few things in this room. I have a few things in the, in the house. A lot of this stuff is packed away in the Halloween box or the 4th of July box or the Christmas box. So I don't really, I can't really see my progress. So I thought, well, let's go ahead and as I fully finish items, they will get written down here. So, so far this year, that is what I finished, fully finished. Um, yeah. So I just thought I would try this and see um, how I feel at the end of the year. If I feel like I've accomplished a lot or if, it, if I, it's a waste of my time, then I won't continue for next year. But this is kind of how I keep myself organized. This is a whip basket. I have two whip baskets. I have a basket that has my kitted or partially kitted projects that I'm ready to, to either finish kitting or start. Um, and then this is one, this is my seasonal whip basket. And the baskets sit, I have a nice little space that's out of the way in the living room. So these all sit on the floor next to my stitchy chair. And then we have, um, I think it's like a subwoofer or something. Again, it's kind of out of the way, not as inconspicuous as the baskets, but what are you going to do? I have two bags, um, totes. These totes are, um, the company used, used to be called Mixed Bag Designs and it was fundraising. So when my kids were counselors in training, they had to fundraise and um, my goal was to not pay $2,000 for both of them to go through the program plus the cost of camp. So um, I uh, we were doing a lot of fundraising. So. Of course, because it's a bag, I bought a lot of these types of bags. They're made out of that heavy duty like tarp material and um, very sturdy um, and very easy to, to, um, to work with. And they hold, as you can tell, a whole lot. So this bag is my seasonal whip bag. So, these are projects that go in here that have to do with the season, but not necessarily the season that is current that I'm working on and not necessarily everything that's for say Halloween is out of this bag and into my, my whip basket. This whip basket are things that I'm currently working on regularly. Um, 
for the seasons. So I have fall, winter, and summer in here. I do still have a little bit of spring, so I'm getting ready to go through and pull out spring and stick it back in here. Um, if they're standing up on end like this, then they are, they are whips that go for the upcoming season or seasons that we're, that we're approaching. If they're flat like this, then they're ones that are for a future season I'm not ready to touch yet. So a seasonal whip working basket and then a standby waiting in the wings bag. So what do I do with everything else that's not a season? Well, you should ask. I have a non-seasonal bag for the same thing. So the ones that are standing up on the short end are the ones that I tend to gravitate towards that I'm moving really close to the end um, to, to a finish. And the other ones are ones that maybe are not as fun to stitch or I just am not in the mood to stitch them. They're, maybe they're on a timeout for some reason. Maybe they're being contemplated to be, you know, UFO'd. I, who knows? But this is how I store these. So when I'm through stitching, so I stitch basically on one piece a day. And when I'm done stitching for the day, I have another basket and all of my stitching for that day or that week go into that basket. And that's how I keep track of what I'm stitching for videos to show you my whips. If a haul comes in and it will also fit in that basket, it goes in the, everything for that week goes into that basket if I want to talk about it on FlossTube. When I'm done with the FlossTube video and I've posted it, then I go through and I take all of the whips out and they go back into their baskets or their bags. So if I worked on a, if I worked on a sampler, it goes into the non-seasonal bag. If I worked on something for um, Halloween, it will probably go into this whip basket. If I worked on something um, that's spring, but I'm ready to put spring away, it will go into the holiday bag um, to wait until the next time I'm ready to pull it out and, and work on it. Because those are going to be a little bit longer time between stitchy sessions. Um, there is a caveat to my seasonal whip basket. Um, my birthday stitches are in here because I go to this first before I tend to go to the other things, unless I know like I wanna work on dreaming of poppies. It's not gonna be in this basket. It's gonna be in the non-seasonal um, whip bag. So I'll go grab that or entwined hearts because it's got hearts in the title and because it's being stitched in pink and it's got hearts on the sampler, it could go into the seasonal whip bag, but it's a sampler and I'm keeping it in with the sampler bag. Um, if I'm working on something like a birthday stitch, it will also be in here. The things that are not a birthday stitch will be put back in the bag that sits on like the subwoofer or whatever it's called in the house. Um, and I feel like this is a lot of whips. So how I'm planning on tackling these whips, I go through here. So my Friday focus piece is in here and I pull from here. This Friday, I will probably finish the Friday focus piece that I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, and I will be done with that series. So that series will, once I film the video, the chart, because it's the Brenda Gervais snowball chart, it's a booklet with several charts in it, and they're small, will go into this box. The fabric, I will make sure that it's tagged properly and it will be filed in where I keep my fabric. Um, the, 
and the piece itself I mean if I have leftover fabric I don't think I really have leftover fabric but the piece with all the stitching on it because for that one I've got all of the things on one piece of linen that will get put into the drawer for finishing so when I finish the next time I will pull it out and I will find trim and I will find backing fabric if I want to make it a pillow or if I want to do a flat fold and put it on something I'll find whatever it is I want to put it on and I will finish it um, I will finish it up and kind of pull stuff out of that um, that drawer and then the floss gets put back to stash and this bag gets put back where I keep my empty bags that process is working really really well for me it's one day of dedication on one piece and then it's done does that mean that I don't pick it up during the middle of the week if I feel like the urge to stitch on it of course I do I pick it up and I stitch on it because the sooner I can get something done the sooner it's out of my whip mess and FFO somewhere in a frame on a on a shelf on a pillow wh whatever it is and so that's what um, that's what I've been doing I, I think that that's pretty much how I work with my charts and my patterns um, how I store them how I record them how I inventory them and how I work through my whips the goal is to get rid of the two bags and just have a basket of new starts and a basket of whips and then my basket um, that I drop my projects that I've worked in for the week that need to go onto a video so just the three baskets that's it um, will I ever get there if I'm honest probably not but I'm certainly going to try so picked up the Brenda Gervais they came out last year I believe and they were three round ornaments with reindeer and a Santa one with a basket of um, peppermint candies one with a house and lights and one was something else really really cute so I picked that up and I worked on it and eventually that will become a Friday focus when I get ha about to the halfway mark in the third piece I'm, I'm finishing up the second one I'm about halfway done with the second one that I'm stitching the third one when I'm about halfway through that one very likely will move into a Friday finish so that it gets touched every week until it's done if a piece is about halfway done then that's what I'll do I'll, I'll pick one of those and I'll fin work on it every week until it is finished um, because sometimes you can have things do you do that you go through your whip pile and you're like oh wow this is really close to a finish and then you sit down and literally in one stitchy session maybe two it's done that's what the intention is on my Friday focus piece uh, I have a lot of Brenda Gervais and I was watching a video today and um, she has a Brenda Gervais day that she stitches on. I, I want to say it was Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher. I'm not sure. It could have been Primrose Cottage. I'm not sure. But I thought, oh, that's a great, a great day too. So it could be With Thy Needle Wednesday. So because I have a lot of Brenda Gervais charts and um, they don't get picked up as often as I would like because I'm stitching so much so if I want those two days to be a focus day I can do that Sunday um, is either my hometown or my or a birthday stitch day um, so my birthday stitches are land that I love by Teresa Kogut from two years ago indigo lane from this year and summer Quaker uh, summer Quaker bye 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 Lila studio or Lila studio yeah Lila studio this one
this one. Um, so eventually these will get to a Friday focus piece as well, but they've got to be, because these are so large, they're probably going to have to be a little, like, maybe a third left to do, um, because they're very labor intensive and there's a lot to them. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much how I organize my whips, how I work with my charts, how I store my charts, and um, I think that's it. If you have any questions, please um, comment below. Uh, if you made it to the end, thank you. I appreciate it. Make sure that you like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, uh, comment. I do read the comments. I do reply with at least a little heart, you know, technology. I've seen it. Um, sometimes I will write back to you. Um, it all helps to move the channel forward, and I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And uh, until next time, happy stitching. Bye.